three wall championships at the George D. Miller handball courts in Maumee. It's Luis Cordova Jr. against Killian Carroll, a new champion to be crowned here on the court this year. Kevin Peel, Jared Vale with you. Thanks for joining us for all the action today. And of course a uh, fixture of this event, Sean Lenning, who has won every year since dating back to 2014. Well, not in the event this year. Un unfortunately unable to uh, participate but this also means an opportunity for two players who are extremely hungry to try and win a national championship, in particular for Luis Cordova, who's been to the mountaintop but couldn't quite finish the deal the last couple of years in what's been a very competitive match is against Sean Lenning. Uh, absolutely, and uh, it's going to be still a bit of a climb having to play against Killian Carroll here. Uh, these guys have met multiple times in the championships on the four-wall court. Uh, I don't know that they've ever, ever seen each other here in Ohio, uh, so I'm really looking forward to an incredibly uh, exciting, skilled match, two of the highest and skilled players in this game. And it's a very warm day here in Northwest Ohio, and so certainly the heat will factor into how this does play out, but all in all, Killian, one of those players that has been a bit of an up-and-comer, and now the chance is here for him to try and take home that national championship. Yeah, you know, he uh, he had an outstanding performance against Ivan Burgos, who's a, a youngster, um, beating him 3-0. and zero. His uh, primary code originally, right, four wall, as most of the Irish are, coming over here and transitioning well takes a little bit of time to pick up this game, but... This guy is an athlete, mm -hmm. right? And so we're going to see what we have going on. All right, guys, um, we're about to begin the men's open the We have Abe Montijo as our ref. He's a legend. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Gillian Carroll. To some applause. We'll be serving first. Luis Cordovo with the black t shirt. Luis Cordova. Luis was in the finals last year against Sean Lenning. Came up just short, but now his chance is right in front of him. As two for Killian Carroll. Off we go in this men's final. George D. Miller handball courts. Cordova. Return here. Carroll sending this one deep. Unusual hand there. Mm -hmm. Start. What have you seen that's been such a strength in Luis's game throughout the years? Oh, uh, his his stamina, just to continue to, to to carry on regardless of how tired he looks. Um, he has two fantastic hands, and as you can see there, he throws a little a little wrinkle on every shot that he hits with a little spin. And a point there for Luis. His court coverage, just when you think there's no way he's going to get it, he finds a way. Oh, Cordova couldn't quite complete that return. Cordova from Juarez, Mexico, and Killian Carroll now has been residing in Boston, but yes, is originally from Ireland as well. So part of that infusion, the handball infusion into America, which has been cool to see, especially from Ireland. And we have a, a few more of them over here today, right? We have mm -hmm. Mark Doyle and uh, Floda. And uh, they're all participating in the WPH Pro Tour, which is fantastic for the four wall events. Oh, Cordova couldn't quite finish off that hit. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, uh, I think, at the beginning of this match, a little bit of sparring, right? You're feeling your opponent out. You've got that perfect A serve. But, uh, you know, you're feeling your opponent out. That's why I love match play. Cordova felt that one was long. Abraham Montijo and Luis Cordova having a quick conversation there. Luis frustrated because Killian able to serve and get the point right away. So I thought the ball was good. 3-1 Carroll here early. Cordova with the return there. Oh, nice finisher there for Carroll. And up 4 1. What part of Killian's game, Jared, is going to give Luis a ton of issues here today, you think? 
Oh, I think his uh, his serve is outrageous. And again, that athleticism. Did you just see that behind yeah, the back that shot? that was outrageous, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Luis will take over serve here, though. So, and, and we call him, he's like a rabbit, right? He's bouncing around the court. He's not taking timeouts, right? The, the stamina um, and his two hands. Ah, Cordova. Oh. Not quite enough height on that one. And you'll see, once he loosens up, and what he's known for him for, well, his, it's like the Sean Lenning serve. He's starting to go for it already. Down mm -hmm. the right side, just barely clear the line. Starts hitting that. Luis is going to cheat over there, and then he's going to bring it over to the other side. It's going to be very difficult. Carol had to back up on this one. Boy, Cordova, steep angle to play that return. Rally developing here. Kind of clipped the top of the wall to ease up on it. Oh, nice finish there for Carroll. Cordova had to come way back here, almost all the way to our table. <laughs> and then finish it off with the low shot. There's that low serve from Carroll. That's the one. That's the distinguisher. He's practiced that serve. We call him an outlier. Must have done it 20,000 times in his life. Another one. Wow. I, I think I called it there. <laughs> <laughs> Goes to the right that time. And he just get when you get, I, I was a victim of that. When you get in a groove like that, that ball was good. When you get in a groove like that, it's just not much you can do. Timeout taken by Cordova as Carroll has now opened up a 9-1 lead here in game one. The summer sales event going on now at Dave White Chevrolet. That means super savings for you on an awesome selection of Chevy trucks and SUVs. How about a new 2024 Chevy Blazer? Lease one for only $350 per month. Or lease a beautiful new 2024 Chevy Equinox for just $298 per month. The place to go is Alexis and Monroe. Dave White Chevrolet. .com. Sean's Irish Taverns offer great food and fun in a family sports bar atmosphere. And if you're looking for great burgers, steaks, salads, soups, and pizza, we've got you covered. Watch the biggest games every day with awesome food and drink specials. Looking for a banquet room for special parties? Sean's can take care of you. We're locally owned and operated and are proud to be active members of the Northwest Ohio community. Stop into any of the Sean's Irish Taverns today. Just sit back and let us serve you. And the lead continuing to increase for Killian Carroll. A long rally going in favor of Killian moments ago while you were still away. And this one's long, too, for Cordova. Huge hop there on that return from Carroll right now. Just mixing up Luis in multiple ways here. It started with the run on serve, and now he's finishing off points like that. Yeah, a little uh, bad decision making. I think a little indecisive. You should have taken that one out of the air. Uh, but listen, don't count uh, Luis out. Mm -hmm. He's, there's a lot of calculating going on in his head right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why this is a match. You, I've seen matches go 21-1, 21-1 the other way. Mm -hmm. This is game number two. These guys are pros. Absolutely. And you know they'll stay both dialed in. Carroll goes to that right corner, and Cordova waits for it. There it is. Nice finish for Luis. Kind of waiting for him to pounce on that opportunity. He saw it finish with the left hand here. All right. Trying to build himself a little bit of momentum here. He gets down on himself, gets a little frustrated. It doesn't let that last too long. Channels it into some positive energy. Right. 
and certainly in last year's championship match, easy to do that against uh, the competitor of Sean Lenning, who's won 14 <laughs> titles in his career. Yeah. Uh, especially when he gets that serve going, it's easy to get down, but you can't have to stay focused. This is the chance for Luis to try and take home that first championship. Yeah, you know, I think the last guy to beat Sean Lenning was actually back this year. I think, I believe it was Tyree Bastidas mm -hmm. uh, played in the singles, and Tyree got knocked out a little bit early because he doesn't play this code. Mm -hmm. But it'll be fun to watch him and Killian play in the open doubles later today. Now he mentioned in the women's semifinal that we carried here. Oh, nice kill there for Carroll to go up 14-2. Jared, uh, in particular, very focused on one ball. Mm. One ball, four, four ball, his main codes. But ultimately, three wall is something you're still very fascinated with. It's, it's just a different way to, to play a very competitive game. Yeah, and, you know, this is tradition. You mentioned uh, how many years we've been here. I think the 49th year just at these courts, and it's... Uh, 1975. It's, a, it's an event that you can't miss. The tradition, the hospitality, the, the feeding, the cooking, the beer <laughs> truck, um, and coming again. To, this, is, this is a community, man, seeing your friends and family year after year. But the competition, this is a game that is not for the weak. Mm-hmm. As we're playing out here, literally, it could feel 110 degrees on that court. Yeah. Today, a tight bit cooler, but as we're sitting here, Kevin, you, you could feel that heat on you, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How much hotter is it when you're in competition like this? It could be 100 degrees out, but how much hotter is it inside when you're, when you're competing? Probably feels another 15, 20 degrees hotter. Actually, we did have an interesting contrast to that today. Long rally here between Killian and Luis. Where, of course, Michaela Esser in our first uh, broadcast match of the day was able to advance a convincing win over Jennifer Schmidt in the semifinals. She'll face Megan Dornicker in the women's final tomorrow at 10 a.m. Right back here at the rec center. But ultimately, we saw Michaela talking after the match about I'm from Tucson. It's always 100 degrees, so it's nice to step away from that. Of course, she really did this week because it was still 90s a couple days earlier this week. So, and, and still pretty warm today. You know, it's Tucson, 100 degrees, but it's a dry heat. Yeah. They say, right? Here's <laughs> yeah. a. She, she added the humidity to the high temps. Yeah. Cordova has That's Killian a, backing up. What a save! And then Luis puts it away right there. Well, you could see him anticipating that kill. you not giving up. Most guys all the way back here, they're just going to watch, see what happens. He's a cat. I just think he needs to attack that fly shot a little bit more like one wall. By the time he lets it bounce, steps back, Killian's all the way up back in the rally. We saw Killian take a few of those off the air to end the rally. It's a... Uh, Saves you some energy. It is, it is about conserving some energy in these games. And Luis battling hard, but still with quite a deficit in this first game. Oh, Killian goes low. That right corner just buried it in the corner to take serve back. And it will be a 15-4 advantage for Killian Carroll when you return a timeout here at the George Miller Handball Courts. And right now, Killian Carroll in command in game one. During renewal by Anderson's huge Labor Day sale, get incredible savings on the most trusted family of window and patio door brands in America. Call for your free window diagnosis and begin your Renewal by Anderson Signature Service experience. A unique start-to-finish home improvement solution, skillfully guided by Renewal by Anderson professionals. Our Labor Day sale is going on right now, but it won't last. Act now, because these unbelievable Labor Day sale savings on our exclusive Fibrex composite material windows end soon. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. 
Family House is Northwest Ohio's largest shelter for homeless families. Our programs and services have been empowering families since 1985, serving over 16,000 individuals. You can help Family House by providing new or gently used clothing, household items, hygiene products, and monetary donations of any size are always welcome. To learn more or donate, call or visit FamilyHouseToledo.org. Family House Shelter, keeping families together in times of crisis. Killian Carroll, a 15-4 lead. Yeah, there you go. There's the mural we're showing ever since 1975. Three wall championships, a staple in this community and a necessary travel destination for so many great three wall handball competitors throughout the years. Carroll, wow. How did he finish that one off? You know, uh, well, he finished it off because an unusual timeout taken by Killian. He gathered a little bit more energy in this heat. Uh, even Killian needs a timeout. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think uh, Lewis might be thinking about letting this one go a little bit. Cordova. We'll send it towards that right corner. Right now, it just seems like the execution, Killian has all of that, and that's jumped him out to this 18-4 lead. Oh, ball went into our court here. Ball from court five. It's a, uh, unfortunate because that would have been an ace serve, and uh, you really have to you have to replay that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no choice. So Killian with a little disappointed look in his face, but I mean, you can see, like he's, like I said, he's giving it up. You know, sometimes you have to use these strategies and say, why am I going to exhaust myself now? I'm going to recalculate, change my approach, and I'm going to get him out in the next one. That's oh, broken ball. That's huh. a replay. First broken ball of the day. Yeah, you know, uh, these are good batch of balls. You get good batches, you get bad batches, and. Uh, you know, sometimes the glue or any little bit, you know, at our one wall nationals in Coney Island this year, we had 74 <laughs> broken balls. Oh, There's a little bit of, it, it, was, it was a little frustrating for the players, but it happens, yeah. you know? Yep, yep. And uh, a great first game for Gillian Carroll. He controls it throughout 21 to four. He defeats Luis Cordova. We're back for game two of the men's final in just a moment on BCS 10. During renewal by Anderson's huge Labor Day sale, get incredible savings on the most trusted family of window and patio door brands in America. Call for your free window diagnosis and begin your renewal by Anderson Signature Service Experience, a unique start-to-finish home improvement solution, skillfully guided by Renewal by Anderson professionals. Our Labor Day sale is going on right now, but it won't last. Act now, because these unbelievable Labor Day sale savings on our exclusive Fibrix Composite Material windows end soon. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Family House is Northwest Ohio's largest shelter for homeless families. Our programs and services have been empowering families since 1985, serving over 16,000 individuals. You can help Family House by providing new or gently used clothing, household items, hygiene products, and monetary donations of any size are always welcome. To learn more or donate, call or visit FamilyHouseToledo.org. Family House Shelter, keeping families together in times of crisis. We're here for you, right around the corner, ready to serve, connecting our homes, our schools, and our local businesses. So we'll do whatever it takes every day to make sure you stay connected when it counts. Buckeye Broadband. The warning signs leading up to teenage suicide are many. There are always solutions. Suicide is preventable. Even though you may feel lonely, you are not alone. If you are concerned about yourself or a loved one, call 988. If 
If you're in a crisis, call 911 immediately. Carstereo1.com Turtle well, The 73rd edition of the USHA National Handball 3-Wall Championships has not disappointed. We saw a great semifinal earlier on today in which Michaela Esser advanced against Jennifer Schmidt. And now here the men's final taking place on this Sunday afternoon here in Maumee. And right now Killian Carroll in control against Luis Cordova Jr. Happy to have you along. Kevin Peel alongside Jared Vale with you today. And Jared, of course, a longtime competitor in this game, particularly in the uh, one wall and four wall disciplines. But all in all, Jared, we saw in particular that first set that Killian pounced on him early, several points in a row to start, got that serve going when you got to 7-0, 8-0, and then from there, as you roll the highlights uh, from that opening game, he just stayed in control throughout. There was not really much Luis could do to crawl out of that big early hole. No, there wasn't much, and he tried, right? He tried pushing him from side to side, getting some deep shots, but Killian uh, played up front, and I think he took uh, Luis out of his game a little bit, and uh, it didn't seem so comfortable out there, and how can you when the serves are coming like that? And as I mentioned, I, I think he needs to be a little more aggressive and take some more shots out of the air. You know, we saw it in the semifinal where um, Jennifer was uh, stepping up and, and gaining offense by taking it out of the air. But we'll see here. You know, Killian is a determined man. This is his first final at the Nationals. Uh, he's, uh, he's competed in uh, USHA uh, One Wall Nationals before uh, and in in all the four-wall events, so this he's looking forward to add a new title to his uh, accolades. And this is a new new moment as well for Cordova, not this championship match in particular. He fell to Sean Lenning last year in this final, but in particular competing for the national title because Sean Lenning has won every one since 2014 and uh, unfortunately not able to compete. He is uh, hurt this year. And so it's tough to see him not have the chance to try and, and repeat. But also, it, on the other side, it, it's, it's a great opportunity for both of these participants, these fierce competitors, to, to try and take home a national title. And that's why it's exciting for, for either Killian or Luis to have this chance to try and win it today. And with shots like that, Killian definitely has a chance to try and win this second game and, and win in straight. Put him back to 70 feet, then hit it two inches off the wall. You know, again, but Luis is going to pick and choose his moments there. That was smart for him not to make any effort at that other one. And Carroll with a low finish on the wall once again. And a two zip lead. You know, this is a. Uh, Killian ha had some injuries. This is as, as strong as I've seen him in quite some time. Getting chased way back here, uh, and Cordova misjudged the bounce. He seemed to put a, a little bit of uh, natural on that and uh, slid right up the wall. When things aren't really going your way, that's the type of bounces you get, unfortunately. Kind of like the waterfall effect, too, you know? Mm -hmm. You're hitting some good shots, you miss hit a few, and it goes down, and... You know, as the opponent, you just kind of look back and you shake your head. But you fight through and you persevere. Carroll, oh, buries it in the corner again. Cordova on his heels early in game two. And that low serve again. Just smushing Cordova up against that wall. Six nothing start for Carroll. Make it seven. Just making it look so easy, and against one of the top 
competitors in the country, in the world. Yeah, Killian did beat Ivan Burgos in the uh, semifinal. Ivan's a an interesting story as well because he grew up in Mexico, moved to Canada, now here in the United States, and of course having some success. Carroll able to defeat him in that semifinal, but still a, an excellent player in his own right. He's absolutely fantastic. I mentioned before I played, love watching these kids grow up. I played him when he was 12 years old, I think right on this court right here. And uh, I almost lost that match in a tiebreaker, but uh, he hasn't beaten me. <laughs> he never will. Huh? You won't play him again? Never. No. <laughs> It'd be kind of boring for him at this. I'm, you know, <laughs> I think he's 23. I'm 54 now. So, you know, he was 12. I was in my 40s. Got lucky. But, you know, his dad's here, and that's what I love, you know, the... It's a family affair. Tyree's here with his dad, mm -hmm. um, Ivan with his dad, and tons of parents and kids here supporting their their uh, the athletic um, experiences of their children. Cordova on a bit of a run here and a nice finish. Good kill shot there for Cordova. As I said, you got to stay up in that box, and he is uh, he's not going to go down without swinging. We've already seen in a semifinal today on the women's side, although Carroll with a great finish to earn serve back. Megan Dornicker won game one, was up 19-9 in game two against Clanna Monroe, who stormed back to win 21-19 and force a tiebreaker. Dornicker was able to advance to the final with an 11-3 win in the tiebreaker, but still a furious comeback from Monroe. So we've seen it. Don't count Cordova out here at all. Carroll with a nice finish, low on the right. You know, being, again, being a one-wall player, I, I still like taking a half a step up, not in between on those, and, and taking it on the fly for Luis. Just gives Killian too much time to get back in position. I'm sure most of the three-wallers here will call me crazy, but... Call the replay there. Kind of mm -hmm. like that call. Hey, Montijo, our official here. Another replay. Yeah, Killian's using his body, and so as uh, Luis goes over to the other side, he loses sight of the ball. Um, he's calling them really quick, which is good, right? So there's no indecisiveness there. And making the same call twice. We want to be consistent. Yeah, I mean, watching Abe. Abe uh, took the 35-plus uh, senior title. Mm -hmm. um, still competing on the pro level, though. Def Ooh, definitely just one missed the, hit there. He's definitely one of the better referees around here. Which is a thankless position. <laughs> That is a good call. He would have he would have got that if he had the ability to go straight to the ball. Killian gave him the point. Yeah, wow. So that is um, one of the things about uh, handball is really the code of conduct, right? Which means self-enforcing double bounces. Um, if the ball clips you, things the ref not, may not be able to be aware of. So the ref made a call that Killian just didn't think he really had a chance at it. And so uh, according to the code of conduct, you know, he self-enforced and said, no, he deserves the point for that. Kind of like the golfer in uh, yesterday's match that touched the sand, yeah. you know. He's looking to win a couple of million dollars and uh, gave himself a two-stroke penalty. Just goes to show something about that person's, uh, you know, Ethics certainly pays off down the road, even if the result isn't there right in that moment. You know, you'll, you'll find right, and usually it'll, it'll work itself out just like that. You know, he gets a couple easy points, and uh, point. yeah, it over right there, hanging in with Carroll, down just two. Oof, that was a rollout. Wow. Left hand side wall, front wall. Eight, six. 
Ooh. Carroll on serve, and there's that low serve. You know, you, you can I can hear some of the fans just talking about how smooth Killian is on his feet, running around, totally in control of his body at all, at all times. You'll see some guys that look a little wild, a little unorthodox, but uh, it does. It looks like Killian's doing a little bit of a dance. He's on the run there. Good finish by Cordova to earn serve back. 6-10 score, Cordova serving. New champion to be crowned today. Carol backs way up on this one, so too does Cordova. A little deep. Killian calling that timeout again, and uh, what you, the athlete that Killian is, uh, you know, he uh, he trained for a, a few months for a marathon, and he ran that earlier this year. Mm -hmm. You know, did it I believe sub sub three and a half hours after uh, he incurred an injury at a uh, tournament we had in Long Island, carrying me on his back in the open doubles. <laughs> uh, and I said I was even I was a little heavy for the best guy in the world at the time, but. Uh, he pulled a calf muscle, and uh, just six weeks later, he ran that marathon. So just goes to give you a little bit of idea. Some of these runners, like Ray Yor, you see the, how mm -hmm. fit he is. They have an advantage. You know, he's right out there in the front in that little safari hat. Uh, Artificial in the last game as well, the the women's semifinal, the second of the day. And Luis Cordova coming into this off of a, a victory against Sam Esser, a great competitor in his own right, but... What did you see in particular that gave you a, a, a lot of confidence Luis would have a chance to try and claim a national title tonight? Uh, in, in this match over here, um, I, I feel that, uh, you know, I've seen Luis come from, you know, point game down 10 points and, and just never give up, you know. Hands on his head, head between his knees, sweat coming down and, and the only word that describes that is determination mm -hmm. right and, and that's what I see in Luis and, and I've watched them come up through college with his brother Daniel and I, who are these guys and every year they get better and better so you know even after that uh, quick start by killing you see the determination and we have uh, Luis is right back in the game here Moving up towards that back wall. And now he just needs a few of those bounces that Killian was getting earlier. They're feeling each other out on this rally. I don't think people understand that are watching the... Uh, the level of um, endurance that a rally like this takes, you know? Like I said, I, Probably our longest of the day we've seen on in front of the cameras. By far. Oh, oh and what the finish. a finish. Yes. Uh, you know, and, and I'm in fairly good shape, older than these guys, but four or five shots, and you're just, you know, it's kind of like you're looking at some of those tennis rallies. You're like, how are those guys going back and forth? But it's what they train for. I don't know everyone's training routine. But I could tell you that Killian does a lot of jump rope. <laughs> yes, he was out there actually before the match. Well, before the match, probably about 20 minutes in advance, just getting warmed up. First one to take the court today. That, that rally might have taken a little bit out of Luis. Might not be a bad time to call a timeout. Maybe if you can get one or two quick points. Yeah, this is a tipping point after that big rally. It's a big shot there. I needed to finish that one, but carry on. 12-6, Carroll in front. Oh, that one hit off the stanchion up above and went out of play. Cordova, Cordova trying to use a little too much height there.
Yeah. Like that call. You know, he's a little tired out of position. It's a fair call. You know, it's nice. Even though it's hot this year, we've been uh, fortunate to escape any rain. Uh, last year, they had to take it indoors, which is which is a total different game. Mm -hmm. You start bringing the finals into four wall, it changes who, who's got the advantage many, yeah. many times. Cer certainly the regular day three wallers don't like that back wall. Yeah, strategy totally different in that set of circumstances. I guess that's one of those that you have to overcome. Unfortunately, the uh, the adversity along the road to win a national title. Because you can never control the weather. <laughs> no, no, you can never control the weather. Not and, here uh, especially. Listen, I again, being a one-wall guy from New York and running all the USHA Nationals out of Coney Island, that's my biggest uh, stress point leading up to it, looking at the weather and uh kind of come to grips that uh, New York it'll stay nice till about 4 or 5 o'clock we'll get some showers we'll clean the courts and we'll get back on but uh, sometimes the players aren't always understanding thinking we can control the weather too yeah nice right. hit there from Killian yeah the score is 6-15 and uh all right, a nice little go. paddle shot. Again, waited for the short hop, though. I like stepping in. Wondering if his brother Daniel is at home watching. Uh, he's usually here. I remember seeing Daniel face off against Sean Lenny, and that's why that Cordova name was so familiar. Daniel has had his battles with Sean as well in years past, and Luis just his second appearance in this title match. Probably first of many, I would expect. Yeah. Always hope to see uh, the great Sean Lenning uh, come back to the three wall in his domination. We'll see what the future holds. Um, you know, yeah, you got two different kinds of players. You have some that are coming happy that he's not in the bracket. Yeah. And the others that look forward to facing him. Yeah, want to face him, yeah. You want to defeat the champ, right? You want to beat yeah. the best. Back in the day, you probably wanted to face Tiger Woods, even if you didn't want to. <laughs> you know, even if you do, it mm -hmm. could very well not mm -hmm. not go in your favor. Yeah, that was uh, dominance. But again, I I, I, I think that uh, with the uh, Killian athletic ability, his handball. Um, dominance in the four wall. Um, he could be that new, oh. the new wave where he's they're going to be chasing Killian. It's kind of what it's looking like right now. Buries that one in the right corner. And, and again, um, mentioned Tyree Bastidas before, who was the last to be Killian in uh, 2014, I believe. He is the uh, poster boy of one wall handball. Just finishing his 10th national title, uh, overtaking Joe Durso. So there are some guys that when they get in there, man, they're tough to beat. Killian is the reigning four-wall champion already, trying to claim the three-wall here today. And there it is. Killian Carroll wins his first national championship in three-wall as he takes down Luis Cordova. 21-4, 21-7. Carroll with the win today. So impressive. Again, Cordova came ready to go, and and he his compete level was high, but killing Carroll today with his execution just too much in the end. Too too much to handle, and, and you got to take it out for Killian, who's very new to this code of the sport. Uh, he's been playing in Arizona. He's been running around the country trying to get in as many events as he can, and it just shows his learning curve is uh, wasn't much, right, to get to this title. And, and I saw it on his face. You know, he's used to being in the winner's circle. He doesn't show much emotion, but I know this means a lot to him, and I, I'm, I'm happy for him. Absolutely. Killian Carroll wins the men's title, his first national championship in three wall, our first new champion 
Of course, Sean Lunning was on such a long run. It's the new first new champion since 2014. Congrats to Killian. Congrats to Luis on a great match here today. And thanks so much for joining us for this production of Handball and the USHA 73rd edition of the National Handball Three-Wall Championships here from the George Miller Courts at the Rec Center. Thanks for joining us for this BCSM production here on Buckeye Broadband. On behalf of my broadcast partner, Jared Vale, and our entire fantastic crew, I'm Kevin Peel saying thanks for watching and good afternoon from all me.